Hi, so I tried Azure AI uh, speech services recently, and today I'll uh, show a quick demo how to use that from Java slash Clojure code bases and uh, share some thoughts about it. So first of all, uh, you can try that without uh, writing any code uh, or even uh, re registering an account. So basically you go to speechmicrosoft.com portal and then uh, here I tried a couple things. One is uh, this uh, text-to-speech option, uh, and there is a voice gallery. So if you click here, uh, there will be a list of uh, available uh, voices uh, for multiple languages and uh, with different characteristics. Uh, but you can basically play all of those and see what you like. Uh, if you click uh, on one of those, you'll have more details right here and you can try it out with your own uh, text and uh, it's quite nice and also here's a pretty good example of the uh, sample code for multiple languages for our use case the java will be pretty useful and also uh, later we're going to use one of the voices if you need to find uh, the code for that voice you can find it right here this string basically represents the, the name of the voice. So that's the first thing. The other one uh, that I was excited about is uh, the um, pronunciation uh, ass assessment, right, right here. And the idea is opposite. So now we will uh, provide our own recorded uh, short sample and the reference text. And it uh, should return some detailed analysis uh, for things like pronunciation, correctness, some other params, and uh, in general, and also word by word. And you can also try it here, it's just limited to five seconds without a count, uh, but it should be enough for a short sentence. Um, let's jump into the code and see that in action. So I'm using Clojure here. Uh, the only dependency you need is this um, uh, Microsoft Java SDK for the speech service. And uh, first one will be uh, uh, text-to-speech. Uh, in that case, we are going to use the speech uh, synthesizer. And um, you basically just want the speech config. Uh, you, pro you provide it uh, Asia region and Asia speech service key. So the speech service key, uh, the only th thing you need to do is to act actually create an Azure account, then go there and uh, create uh, a speech service. It's basically like no config, nothing. You just uh, create that and after you will be able to see uh, one of the API keys. And that's the only uh, thing you need to authenticate here. Uh, after you've done that, uh, we uh, using this uh, voice name, as I showed before, like this string here represents the, the name of the voice. And uh, a bit of closure, like uh, it's quite nice in closure how you create uh, Java objects and initialize them. So if you're not familiar with uh, do to, we can quickly go here. And basically what it allows you to do is you create a Java object as a first uh, line, and then you can call uh, methods to uh, like call um, these instance uh, methods on top of that. And the result of this is actually returning this uh, object that was created first. So this allows us to write quite neat code saying like, I create this, uh, instance first and then I set some prompts on it and at the end uh, this original speech config will be returned. So it's quite useful when you don't have uh, an SDK following the a builder pattern when you can just chain the, the calls uh, into a single initiation block. Um, but yeah, that was uh, a short detour, but let's move on. So basically we have this speech uh, synthesizer, uh, it's wrapped with, with open because this is auto-closable and uh, we basically call uh, a method uh, call, uh, named speak text. Um, so yeah, uh, annoyingly they use this uh, capital letter uh, naming for the methods as well. Uh, it's quite confusing for a Java developer, but uh, that's Microsoft, so yeah, whatever. Um, 
This will return the speech synthesize uh, result, and we can basically check the reason. If that's successfully completed, uh, we'll print OK. Uh, if not, there'll be some kind of error. Let's uh, reload that and uh, uh, run this command. So what's actually happening right now, I can uh, hear the output in my headphones. Uh, I'm not sure that the video is recording the uh, system uh, sounds, but basically by default, um, when you call this function, it will just play uh, the generated uh, sample back to you. Uh, if you want to save it to a file, you need to do some additional config. It's really simple, so the only thing you need to do is uh, uh, say it audio uh, config uh, right here. It will be audio config, and then from um, uh, output file, and we can say something like output dot um, and also this uh, speech uh, synthesizer class uh, accepts this audio config as the second argument. So we can basically just go here and uh, put it like this. And it, now when we reload our REPL and rerun our program, uh, now I'm not hearing anything, but our file will be created. So if I do less, uh, now I can see this output output file. And uh, now I'll just play the sample so you can hear the result. The sun rose, casting golden hues across the tranquil morning sky. All right, so that was the first bit, uh, which is text-to-speech. Uh, the, the other one, as I said, will be the, the opposite, and it will use the pronunciation assessment. So most of the config uh, is the same, right? So we've, we've seen this already. We have audio config, but now it is from file, not uh, fr uh, from the input file, not the output. And then uh, we can figure our speech recognizer with uh, uh, the language uh, code, and then the speech config and audio config. And then our pronunciation assessment config uh, it will basically uh, receive the uh, reference text and then a couple other options. So that's our basic configuration. Um, the, then we call our speech recognizer. Uh, we use this recognize once a sync and it will return the future. And then we do the uh, get from a future with timeout. And after that, we basically allowed to uh, view the results. Uh, there are some fields that are exposed as methods on the out, uh, like the cl class instance, but more details could be achieved by uh, reading the JSON result directly. And uh, then I just decode the JSON result uh, into closure map. And that's how it works. So let's... Um, run this and actually this output uh, file is what we generated from the from the previous run of the text to speech so let's run this and here we go uh, we have quite high scores right here and then as you can see uh, we have some word by word uh, analysis as well so that's uh, all really interesting uh, the slight uh, pinch of salt is that I tried myself, like record my voice for some sentence, trying my best, and uh, I got pretty decent scores as well uh, on the on the first run, and that was quite nice. But after that, uh, no matter how I tried to make it really bad, I was still getting pretty high scores, like fours or like eighties. And uh, I'm, I'm just not convinced that um, it will give a nice and good feedback uh, for the users right now. So hopefully it will be improved and maybe there are some options you can tune or something like that. 
uh, but overall with this particular one uh, I wasn't too much impressed right now with with the results uh, but maybe yeah, maybe I'm wrong uh, that text-to-speech option uh, I created multiple samples and I think that works really well and this collection of the voices that's available is really nice um, male and female voices different accents uh, and yeah overall the result is is really impressive so check it out um, but yeah that's all I wanted to share uh, if you know a better alternative uh, especially for this pronunciation uh, assessment type of things, maybe it's different AI. Um, I would really like to try that. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments and overall let me know what you think about Azure AI services in general. Uh, thanks a lot, see you next video, bye bye.